Georgia got another big SEC win at home on Saturday, and there were some big-time recruits on campus to witness it. In this video, we're going to see if Georgia is on the verge of flipping one of the Gators' top commitments. The Dogs just offered a wide receiver from North Carolina. Are they too late? And Cam Michael, he set a date. Is Georgia the favorite? We're going to find all that out in this video. But first, subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. Look at this. We're over 20K thanks to you guys in just over two months. I really appreciate it. Hit subscribe. Okay, let's bring on Rusty Mansell from Dogs HQ. New offer out at wide receiver. We don't see this a lot from Georgia putting out new 2024 offers midseason. But they have 6'3", 185, Terrell Anderson from Greensboro, North Carolina now. He visited Georgia this weekend, but I got to ask you, are the dogs too late on this one? No, I wouldn't think too late. They brought him in. They got his family down. They had him last. They had him this past summer and got a chance to meet him then. So he's got a teammate, a former high school teammate in Jamal Jarrett, already on campus as a, as a true freshman. So mm -hmm. there's some connection to that. There's some connection to that school. And I think this is the time of year, Josh, when you start seeing those boards kind of adjust based off, you know, a senior play. Uh, did you get this guy? Did you get this guy? And, and, and teams are going to have to make decisions right now, Josh, because in about one month when this portal opens, it's going to be wild, wild west. So how many spots do you actually have? And, you know, what are you going to feel with high school kids? But George is certainly recruiting Terrell Anderson, came down for an official visit with his family this weekend, and that's going to be one we're going to watch over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I like the mid-season offers. You don't see them a lot, but when they happen – you know that staff has an item. Last week, we saw Alabama offer a running back out of seemingly nowhere, Jayden. and now Georgia offers Jayden, a wide Jayden receiver. Bob. Okay. Now, yeah. let's talk about somebody that we've been having on our board for a while, and that's Cam Michael. He set a decision date. Now, Cam Michael is from Statesboro, Georgia. He's a four-star athlete, stars on both sides of the football on offense and defense, and he'll be letting the world know on Thanksgiving, November 23rd, where he'll be going, Tennessee, Colorado, South Carolina, Kentucky. Texas A&M and Georgia are the primary teams involved for the number nine ranked corner in the country. So mm -hmm. Steve Wiltfong put out this morning that he's going to re make return trips to Colorado this weekend and then Tennessee right before his decision. Is Georgia mm -hmm. in position? Can they keep Cam Michael in the state of Georgia? It's good to have him on campus, especially as his decisions come along. He said he had a good time. He got a chance to meet with Brian McClendon. I know Kirby Smart met with him after the game for an extended period of time. Fran Brown has been highly involved with him. And, you know, he's going to go to Colorado. He's going to go to Tennessee, and then he's going to mm -hmm. make this decision. But Georgia has been on him since the 10th grade. He made that comment to our Jeremy Johnson. He goes, look, I know Georgia. I know our relationships there. I'm glad I went back, and I'm glad I got to have some discussions with Georgia. So, you know, I think you kind of you kind of let that visit high wear off. I mean, those that's a real deal, Josh. You know that coming off those visits, you kind of want to know what they're thinking on Tuesday, right? But Cam Michael is so late in the process as a senior. It's kind of it's not norm, not the norm now to kind of go this long. He's done. He's been there and done that. So these three schools, I think Georgia, Colorado, or Tennessee, in my opinion, are the are the three main contenders down the stretch. But I think Georgia, that could have been a very key visit to get him there, get him face-to-face -face with Brian McClendon and let him know, hey, you can play offense if you want to come to Georgia. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I mentioned about five or six teams at the top that Cam was considering, but I do. I agree yeah. with you. I think this is really yeah. coming down to three teams, and that's Colorado, yeah. Tennessee, and Georgia, and all mm. three have a shot at him, but you know, we'll see what happens. Some visits still left. Some meat still left on the bone of this recruitment. Yeah. Um, Yep. Uh, I teased at the top about a Florida Gator possible flip, and we're talking about Nasir Johnson. Now, he's the mm -hmm. big-time defensive lineman from the state of Georgia, and when he committed a UF, he said he did so because he felt, quote, needed, and says yep. that he wants to feel that same love from Georgia on his upcoming visit this weekend. Rusty, is Nasir Johnson a priority? Do you think he'll feel that love from the Georgia staff over the weekend? I mean, certainly, you know, Georgia can they can handle an official visit. I think the key thing and kind of the the detail here, Josh, is his mother went to Georgia for the first time for that Kentucky game. That's the first time she'd ever been on campus. She has a job where she requires to work some weekends and uh, some things like that. So she's not free just to travel all the time like most people are. She got a chance to come to Georgia with him. At that time, they said, you know what, we're going to make an official. We're going to set this thing up. So he'll be back with his family again this weekend. So um, 
I think that's a big deal to have him. Trey Scott went down on the bye week, got a chance to watch him practice at Dublin High School. And, uh, you know, I think I think Georgia's – I think he's a big priority for Georgia, an in-state defensive lineman, very athletic kid. And, you know, they're looking for those body types. Obviously, Florida, mm-hmm. very, very similar scheme-wise, they're doing the same. So, uh, this is going to be one of those battles to the end. But I think Georgia's starting to feel – a little bit of momentum with this. Let's see if they can capitalize this weekend, have him on campus. Yeah, Nasir Johnson is one of those big, elite, athletic bodies that everybody covets. And Georgia's trying to flip him. Florida State's trying to flip him. Colorado's involved there to some extent. But I think right now, as it stands, probably Georgia might have the best chance to get him from the Gators. And like you said, it's going to go all the way down to the wire for him. Uh, The last time you were on, we talked about LJ McRae and how, you know, the Mm -hmm. Georgia staff was hoping to fill out their defensive line class. Well, LJ McRae commits to the Gators. Now we're talking about Nasir Johnson. Who is the top remaining defensive line target for Georgia? And how many more do you think they can fit in this class? It's hard to say who is the top. I can tell you they're recruiting Nasir Johnson really hard. And Mm -hmm. Mikael Barreau, who's another former Florida commit yeah, who plays there at true. Creekside High School. He, he's a zero technique. He's a kid that's six foot five, 380 pounds. Not many of him. They're going to bring in, I said this morning, they're going to bring in, I think his name is Bren Taylor, uh, the Juco tackle out of Texas. Uh, he's, he's, taking, he's already visited to Auburn. He'll take an official visit to Georgia this weekend, and I think he's got one scheduled for early December for for Florida so there's still some what you would say Josh there's still some meat left on the bone with Georgia defensive line they're looking for those 6'4 6'5 260 280 pound guys that can play defensive end play that five technique in the three four I know people don't really get into kind of the numbers but Josh there's only so many of those type body right. types around the country so they become that much more of a commodity so Georgia's looking to add to that defensive line specifically in this class. Yeah, simple economics. Hey, there's not a huge supply of big quality big men in the trenches, but there's a huge demand. So what happens? Value goes way up at the position, just how it is. And it's going to be an exciting run to signing day. Rusty Mansell, thanks for stopping by, checking in on the inside scoop and talking some Georgia recruiting. Appreciate it, Josh. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that content, be sure to subscribe to the On3 Recruits channel. We have a new page dedicated only to recruiting. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button right now.